Well, welcome to a new Harry's Farm video. Lots to do on this one. It's been about a month since I did the last report from the farm. It's 21st of May, I think it was. Oh my goodness, all sorts of things have happened since then. Um, when I was talking back then, I was saying, oh, the crops are under no stress whatsoever. They're you know, enjoying this sun, finally some sunny weather. Uh, the trouble is we haven't actually had any rain since the 8th of May. <laughs> so now things are starting to change in the field, which I'll show you in a moment. And also I described how basically the oilseed rape, as far as I could see, just couldn't ever grow to grain. What am I going to do with uh, break crops? Am I actually going to look at the government's environmental schemes and give up growing crops? I'm going to discuss that as well. Anyway, let's just kick off with the winter wheat, which we have here. This winter wheat, when you look at it, it looks good. Um, it still has the sort of dark colour. You can now see we've got ear emergence actually coming out. The flag leaf I was describing last time, that is obviously fully out. And we've been running through this. We put a fungicide on when that flag leaf was out. So we did it on the, I think it's the 27th of May. Absolutely perfect conditions just when you want to do it. There's still no disease on show out there and all is good. But I can't believe I'm saying this. We are now fighting the weather and the lack of rain. It was, we had rain constantly every day in the, here in the UK, like March, April and into May. It's like a continual um, sort of cold, relentless sort of drabness, not the spring we've been enjoying the last couple of years. 8th of May, as I say, last rain, about 19 mil. And then the sun popped out and it hasn't really stopped since where well, it's got cloudy and stuff and we've had this easterly wind and because the crop it went in in really good conditions but because it, we also had quite a wet late um 22 didn't have to put its roots down very far because there was plenty of moisture about and then we had the sort of wet period in you know as i've just explained march and april so again the roots didn't go down because they put their toes a bit too far down they got into sodden water we actually had a flooded area up on this field in early may unheard of but that's how much rain we were had in that period so the root structure isn't dramatic like it has been in other years so it's actually showing signs of drought quicker than perhaps I expected, certainly. I popped the drone up today, and if I fly across this field, m lots of it looks good, and then you suddenly saw this sort of white look, and it's actually the soil structure is different. It's just drier, gravelier areas, um, and doesn't retain the moisture, or the roots haven't gone down very far, and it's now getting quite pinched. I'm gonna show you some pinched, what pinched wheat looks like up in the far corner. It doesn't look like this. It's a spiky appearance or something like that. So we're watching that with interest. Today is forecast definitely going to rain, 80% chance of rain. It's uh, two o'clock at the moment. I've just looked at the radar and it's there is rain over Devon and Cornwall. It seems to be heading off to Wales, but there are some lumpy bits um, in Northern France. Maybe we'll get those, I don't know. But my goodness, the crops definitely need a bit of rain. Right, I was out with this Vadastad carrier uh, this morning because I've got an area of wild bird mix, which is for winter feed. So I've got to get it in. And I fully intended to do it right at the beginning of May. But the weather, it was sort of wet to begin with and I couldn't get on. And then I thought, oh, I, now I'm, I was also on that bike thing in Morocco, which didn't really help. So I thought, well, I'll do it when they forecast some more rain. And as I said before, they haven't forecast any more rain. So we, we spray this off with um, glyphosate. And I've just been out here cultivating this morning. It's sort of dust bowl, as you can see. It's pointless putting any seed in here at the moment. But I just wanted to rough it up. So if we do get some rain, it gets absorbed into this um, soil. And then I'll give it a quick cultivate again as well and put the spit i've got the spinner on the front i've actually put some grass seed on as well in another area of the farm and we'll get the wild bird mix in here which will then go up through the next few months obviously the soil temperature is going to be right off the scale and yeah 
that will look very different this winter and I will be yeah wild birds best mate because this will be a sort of feeding area of millet and all sorts of um, things they'll be pecking away at this this is actually the failed oilseed rape we've um, again glyphosated it off so we don't get a build-up of grass weeds and that sort of thing um, we would probably put a cover crop in if we got a bit more reliable weather and a bit of rain forecast and followed by a bit more rain but uh, at the moment it's a wait and see just see what the weather's going to do right i'm going to take you over and show you what what the wheat is doing through this lack of moisture okay. now we're in the same field of wheat as we were earlier but a completely different look at this corner in, in this field and you can see what we term by sort of spikiness see there's the flag leaf and it's completely rolled up it's trying to protect itself and stopped losing too much water and it's it basically this is what are the first effects of when you have no rain um, show up in the wheat that's how it looks i mean the wheat is flowering and I just hope it continues to flower. It doesn't get too stressed out and sort of have blind gra um, grain sites because it's very clever, a wheat plant. All it wants to do is produce as much seed as it can because it wants to reproduce. It wants more of its um, offspring to grow in fundamental form. So it will do everything it can to produce grain. But the drought, well, it might knock off a few tillers or it might not actually germinate every single grain site. But that is the first sign of a lack of moisture where you see it in the wheat, that rolled up appearance. It's not quite so bad here, but as I say, you put the drone up and it's very obvious. I can see it slightly stunted, a slightly rippling effect here. And if I look the other side of the head, what well, um, this wall you can see an area here this actually floods so this is completely different it's weird you know we're on brash you say why don't we drain the land generally it's complete opposite up here we have this problem with drought rather than wet feet generally but this is a little uh, clay pocket it's just not worth draining that little tiny area of all the big machinery so you just live with it and some years are wetter than others and unfortunately this spring was particularly wet that's the wheat and my dilemma right at the moment is what I'm going to grow next in these fields. So these are what we've termed second wheat, which I've explained before. We've, we've put a break crop in and then we put a wheat crop in first wheat. That's our most profitable. And then we put a second wheat in, not quite as profitable, but OK. And then we put another break crop in. So this is due to go into oilseed rape. But I've said no more oilseed rape growing on this farm and I highlighted this last time and I've been looking at what's available. I had a meeting last week with an advisor and I think it'd be useful just to run through some of that now. Just to say this um, Range Rover, I've done a report on it coming up in Harry's Garage. That's going live on the 18th of June, uh, so next Sunday. And yeah, it's a bit of a special one. Uh, I've got a guest who joins me and we discuss all things about Range Rover L322 and whether this is peak Range Rover, but that's gonna be on Harry's garage. Right, what I wanted to do was run through some of the numbers. There's a very good table just come out on Farmers Weekly website, and that is a budget uh, crop gross margins for harvest 2024 because that's what i'm looking at if i put obviously rape in here that's the harvest is 24 and as i mentioned last time the price has come right down from the peaks we saw in 22 and the gross margin which is the figure after paying for all the sprays seeds fertilizer etc on oilseed rape for next year is put at 406 pounds a hectare gross margin out of that would come to but there's all your fixed costs come of it 406 is rubbish if i look at feed wheat it's 977 over double the profit gross profit from growing wheat than oilseed rape and then i think well i can't i can't grow oilseed rape what about growing beans so i put winter beans in 469 still half what wheat is um spring beans the same three and 433 pounds so Figuring you've got to have in your head 406 pounds if I put a crop of oilseed rape in. What is the, the average fixed cost on UK farms? Well, in 2024, it's predicted to be 597 pounds. Let's call it 600 pounds for ease of mass. That's nearly 200 pounds more 
than if I have a good crop of oilseed rape in the ground, I'm going to make a £200 loss before I do anything. So complete waste of time at, at the moment with prices where they are and where they're expected to be putting oilseed rape in the ground to harvest next year. So it's going to be really interesting what other people are thinking about cropping because a negative of 200, you will have to get almost a ton more crop to come break even on oilseed rape, ton more than average. I can't see that's going to happen. So, and you're not going to do beans, you're not going to do beans. Fortunately, the government, as I've mentioned before, are much keener on paying us for doing environmental stuff than they are for growing food. And that's what the area payment used to do. We used to put up a little bit of loss here and there because overall it averaged out, we're getting the area payment, so we continue to grow obviously rape and breaks and everything was good. I looked at, I'm in a countryside stewardship scheme at the moment. There's eight meter margins around most of the farms, six, eight meters, they're, they're different sizes because when we put them in, it wasn't fixed. Um, heart, enhance on the grassland, we don't put any nitrogen on, we um, have a high density of um, other wild flowers in the grassland, that sort of thing. Oh, I look after the stone walls, you saw that stone wall things. So I'm looking, well, do I go into another area? Is there something I can replace oilseed rape with as a break crop by putting just a fallow crop in? And I looked down the countryside stewardship and there's something called AB6 and it's called Enhanced Overwintered Stubble. And they will pay me £522 per hectare to do absolutely nothing. So I cut this wheat, don't, basically don't touch it, um, let, don't touch it until I think April, May next year. And they will pay me £522. That is £122 more than I would earn for putting an oilseed rate crop in. So that's an easy one to think, yeah, we're going to do that rather than risk an oilseed rate crop. But they're, they're also keen to do some more. And there's something called the Sustainable Farming Incentive. And they came out of this in January of this year. And that will pay more on top and there's all sorts of payments in here, um, integrated pest management, so complete integrated pest management assessment and produce an I IPM plan, £1,000 a year. Um, no use of insecticide across the farm, £45 a hectare for that. Establish and maintain a legume fallow, £593 a hectare, all well above what I'm going to uh, have for oil seed rate. The downside of this scheme is they haven't announced the full scheme yet. And I've got to make my decision fairly shortly. There is a big show next uh, week called Cereals. I think we're going to get from the government what they're going to do there. But for me, this is the biggest change I know in farming since Set Aside was introduced. And that was in the 90s. Because I'm going to completely revamp what we do. And I'm probably at least the third of the farm will be going down to an environmental scheme so we don't have any break crops on the farm and we just concentrate on growing wheat. I could look at spring barley. Uh, Mr Clarkson up the road has Hawkstone lager. He would like me to grow barley. A bit high risk because spring barley, if you get a year like this, if this really does dry out, well, spring barley is a waste of time and I have to make malt as well. So that bit I'm still looking at where we continue with wheat and things like that. Anyway, so that's what's going on from a business point of view what are we going to do instead of oilseed rate? While I'm talking about oilseed rate, let's go have a quick look at how that's getting on. Well, here's the oilseed rate. Uh, it stopped flowering now, and now it's sort of pod fill. And you can sort of see it here. It does look like a real field of oilseed rape. Let's get out, actually, have a proper look at it. It's amazing how this has come back, this oilseed rate. It's not all like this. If I walk down there, it's probably only about that high, but here I can pretend I have a field of oilseed rape. Yeah, not much going on here. I mean, pod fill happening. You can see they're, they're, I mean, they're proper pods. It's going to be very variable this year. I've just noticed those poppies. Poppies, you always see them in oilseed rape. There is a particular fungicide we can use to take out poppies. And also you quite often get poppies in oilseed rape seed because they're near identical. They're a little black, tiny seed. And there's gazillions, I think it's 50,000 in the poppy head of how many seeds you get. So you don't need very many poppies to then blanket the field. But there you go. This is, I say, I'm, hard, I'm expecting a quarter of a tonne an acre. 
so we work in acres so i would last year we got about 1.4 tons an acre so completely different crop just because of that cabbage stem flea beetle the strange thing is even if i'd actually got a crop it would have been loss making because of the prices although we did see a jump of 25 pounds a ton yesterday from that dreadful thing that happened in ukraine that dam bursting and flooding all the land so it's the, it's as i said before it's just the volatility and when you're exposed to world events on your market you just can't budget for what is going to happen next but the right at the moment and the oil price just makes it an unequal crop especially when it's such a high risk and you get these crop failures every third year or fourth year that's why most people are walking away um the other thing i know on the press just so general farming things i was surprised and disappointed to see how hard the dairy industry is now finding it. I didn't mention that prices were uh, dropping because it's seasonal but they've carried on dropping and there's a lot of dairy farms thinking well I've had enough of this there's so much legislation there's so much we have to do on the farm for containment of slurry and how they treat any river areas and runoff and legislation hitting them from every direction TB testing um, a lot of saying oh, we've had enough of the bureaucracy all I want to do is milk cows and look after my cows but there's so much government intervention and supermarket hammering the price whenever they can we're out five percent of the dairy industry has gone already in 23 and that's after five months by the end of the year it's going to be significantly higher I don't want to anyway that's what's going on in the farm industry that's all um, I'm Think people ought to be aware how hard it is getting but i'm just waiting for this rain now so things will move on i can put my wild bird mix on i can go oh thank, thank goodness for that the wheat will just perk into life it just needs one proper rain another 20 mil and we'll probably be all right for harvest uh harvest this year will be late Ju july early august we haven't got the barley but there you go there's a catch up on harry's farm what's going on the farm i hope you enjoyed it if you did keep watching keep subscribing more videos coming along very soon